All right, everyone, uh, welcome in Mix 1041. We're also on MixTV.TV, and we are joined by the governor of the volunteer state of Tennessee, Governor Billy. Governor, how are you? I'm fine, sir. How are you doing today? Well, we're we're doing good, and and I tell you, we're gonna we're just gonna jump right in. I know you've got a a limited time, a lot going on, and we uh, we've got a lot to to talk about here today. And and I just I just want to begin, Governor, with with a topic that a lot of people are talking about. I know around here and and around the state, and that is the third grade retention law, having to do with uh, reading and and. Uh, TCAP scores on reading in the in the third grade, and you know we're we're talking to a lot of educators, especially who are who are quite frankly concerned about it. But uh, why do you support this so much? And then secondarily, Governor, would be what's your take on all of the opposition and all the bills that are in progress right now to amend the law in the state legislature? Yeah, thank you, Steve. Uh, it's so it's such an important subject, and um, really important that we address it in a in a right way. And you know, you you talk a lot about the third grade retention or third grade this, third grade that. Really, what we have proposed is a literacy strategy that is K through three. It, it's it's not a retention <laughs> bill. It's a reading success proposal and. What what it does is it starts at kindergarten and puts in place supports and benchmarks along the way so that a parent and teachers can see what the progress is for that student well before they reach the third grade and have supports to uh, to help with that. That the goal would be to have no one retained in third grade. Uh, but in fact, to have success for all readers, here's here's why. So, and, and it's really hard, right? I'm a father and a grandfather, and I know this is it's really difficult the reading attainment through that process. But what we have learned, and what is anecdotally, people just know and understand for sure. Uh, you push a kid into grades beyond their capacity. You push a kid forward when they shouldn't be advancing forward because they can't read, and you lay out a much greater certainty for failure. I mean, the worst thing we can do is to push a kid into a class that they're in a grade that they're not prepared to be in because the evidence and the data shows that that they're much more likely to not succeed going forward. We do not want our children to be unsuccessful we want them to be successful. So that's what this K-3 plan is about. And I will tell you this, too. We're not the first state doing this, right? There are multiple states across the country that have clear plans that have been going on for years. And the evidence is clear that they have less third graders retained once this standard is set and, and they get into the program and they have gr- much greater reading success for young people going into middle school. So it's a, it, it, it's a very important subject, and I feel really strongly about making sure that we don't set kids up for failure, but that we set them up for success starting in kindergarten. Joined by Governor Billy. Governor, when we started promoting uh, this interview today, we heard from educators and one educator sent us uh, this. Should local school districts have the ability to pass a student to the next grade, basically being the local school district's decision? I think what what we have to do is have consistency across uh, the state, certainly. And what we need to have is uh, a strategy for success for these kids that we've seen working nationally and we don't need to we don't need to let any kids we don't need to push any kids into a failing strategy we don't need to push any kids in any district uh, into a pathway that's going to be much more difficult for them to be successful and we know this works we know that this has been proven and we should be doing that in our state final question on this topic and this came from another uh, educator and that is uh, would there be a consideration for waivers for students who have parent collaboration? 
Well, I think there's a lot of uh, support for parents who are engaged in their child in this process through uh, through the third grade. You know, in with this plan, there is no parent that's going to be surprised about their kid's inability to read by third grade. They're going to see it. They're going to have opportunity to have interventions, including tutoring and strategies to keep that kid on track. The goal is to have more young people be able to move through third grade and to be able to do it with uh, reading comprehension. That's what we've got to, that's what we've got to have. We, you know, this idea that we should be satisfied with 30 and 40 percent of kids being able to read when in the year when they're supposed to, like the vast majority of our kids can't read when they should. We, we just can't be satisfied with that. We can't find ways around it. We can't uh, make excuses for it. We have to develop strategies that resolve that issue so that our kids are, com- are able to compete with kids anywhere in this country uh, because they're in a school system and they have a strategy that's built around their success. We're joined by the governor of the state of Tennessee, Bill Lee, Governor, really, my final question here, and and there's been a lot of press coverage of the transportation plan that you laid out in your State of the State address. And, in fact, you know, House uh, member and Transportation Chairman Dan Howell, who represents a portion of our listening area, is sponsoring the Transportation Modernization Act. And I'd like to know, you know, why do you feel it's the right plan for transportation projects in the state, and how would it impact our local area? Well, I'm really grateful for Representative Howell's uh, work on this, and he's he understands like I do that you know our state is th- there's a couple of things that are really important to know. Our state's one of the fastest growing states in America, and we have and I have a responsibility to prepare this state for that growth, and so that we don't find ourselves even further behind than we are right now. Now, the second thing to know is. We are a state that uh, does not borrow money to build roads. There are only six states in the country that are debt-free with regard to their road-building program, and we're one of them. And that's a very strong thing. That is a very powerful thing. It's very important. We have the lowest debt per capita rate in the country. And when you're going through difficult financial times like recessions uh, or or downturns in the economy, states without debt, without significant debt, have a much better, uh, you know, a much better outcome going forward. So we don't need to go into debt to build roads. We are the lowest tax per capita state in the country. We don't need to raise taxes on the citizenry in order to build these roads when there is another strategy. But make no mistake, we need to build roads. We are Depending on the estimates you look at, we're $25 billion behind in the roads that need to be built. And the traffic is starting to stack up in Chattanooga and Knoxville and Nashville and Memphis. And the congestion, the uh, need to provide better transportation strategies, it has to happen. Now, the other thing that is important about this is that and I talked about it, additional financial streams. That's what the choice lanes do. But the other thing that's important about this is investing in urban centers where there's a lot of congestion and traffic basically sucks all the money out of the transportation fund to build those big urban projects, and it leaves nothing for rural communities. We are proposing a strategy that will fund urban projects so that we can use existing dollars in the transportation fund to build out rural highways. And we're also including a significant amount of funding for local highway departments. So county road superintendents and county mayors are highly in favor of this program because of the ability for them to not only uh, have additional investments in state highways and in, in interstates, in rural areas, but in their own local building uh, road building program. So, this is a, you know, I can kick the can down the road on this for four years and let the next somebody else, you know, deal with it down the road. But 
in my view, we have an obligation to the people of Tennessee to develop a vision and a strategy and a vehicle by which we can build the roads necessary for one of the fastest growing and most economically vibrant states in the country. Governor Bill Lee, we thank you for your time. We know you have to go, but please, uh, as we close, know that we are praying sincerely for your wife, the first lady of our state, Maria Lee. Please know that. You're 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 very kind to say that, and I'm very, very grateful, and she is very encouraged by the number of people praying, and we are certainly hopeful that the Lord will heal her completely, and thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Amen. Thank you, Governor.